born. Show them how we do this, man. BTBTV. We bully the bullies. No run, no retreat. Yeah. BTBTV. No more time for y'all in the back. Y'all slow ninjas. Ride. Yo. John Gotti flow, rap high below. Escobar status, rap game quality on. I can show you how you lay back and watch your pockets grow. Stay away from devious women, end up like Papa Smoke. Y'all wake up every day twitching, like yo, I got a post. I wake up every day mission, it's million dollar notes. Dominoes, body drop, rock stick like hollow toes. Broadway, man, if you know, then you know. I came for everything they said I couldn't have. Got that and then some, and then some. My wins on overload, say you're overdosed. Your rappers in the tight squeeze and that clutch like Cobra Rope. The okie dope, we don't go for that. All she wrote, another tale from the street. Death and horror flow. The projects like a ghost trying to haunt your soul. Another tale from the street. Homicide the folks who want to play to them gun scream. Adios. Another tale from the street. Black, Black mafia. mafia. So dumb, really on, mixed with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting to their life, movie curtain closed. Nowadays, your foes will plot you wearing Malcolm X hats, triple sixes, the devil on his shoulder, one the death match. Reminiscing when more street ninjas was off the hook, chasing these up off the block. Torn to run and get the force, blood on pavement. He's 12 years old and he tough to play with. He don't go to playgrounds. That's his fiends who want their veins stick. We can't miss. We can hit the talk and put our hands behind our back, our eyes closed and half brainless. Don't play with us. Another tale from the street, death and horror flow. The projects like a ghost try and haunt your soul. Another tale from the street, homicide the folk who want to play, send them guns, scream, adios. Another tale from the street, black mafia. So dark, Corleone mixed with Al Capone. Another tale from the street, like an opera show. These kids be acting till they like movie curtain close. Yeah, BTBTV. The movement, man. You're born. You're born. Let's get him. Let's get him. Cash, we up in here, man. Yo, what it do? Y'all, what it do? It's the King of New Jersey's BTB TV. We bully the bullies. Y'all already know what it is, man. Yo, today the show we're doing is about, um, I'm doing two shows. Baby Sam Edmondson, who, who should be coming home soon, got the murder conviction thrown out. So we have only have drug charges now. And he already did, he already did like 30 years. So he should be out, he should be out soon once they, once they tally up that time. So, um, free baby Sam Sam to peace, peace of my bro. Yo, TV is fake. Hit that link, boy. The link in the, the link in the description, man. The link is in the description. Hit that link, boy. Yo, um, so we about to we about to we about to start. I'm gonna give you a little history of baby Sam. Then we go to with the verdict is. Um, TV is fake. He put me on this shit. You know what I'm saying? That cop definitely dirty, yo. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna start with some pop a lot, the pop a lot interview of Baby Sam real quick. Pop a lot, you know what I'm saying? All my beats. Yo, yo, yo. We back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Headshot City with this one. Brooklyn. Brownsville. East New York. Best style. 
the whole Brooklyn, y'all niggas getting a comment box. Matter of fact, the whole headshot city getting a comment box. You know, you know what it is nigga, with us. Now, the guy that we gonna be covering today is a guy that we should have. Yeah, more time, day, bro. More time. You can call him King Crack. I see my G. Was good. What's the, good, my bro? Uh, mainstream Crack King. You can call him one of the first big timers. Um, and actually, he's gonna be a guy that is kind of like loosely mentioned a lot like recently we've been covering a, a lot of people that well, first of all one second one second one second first of all covered um everybody heard of the well let me one second one second let me um i want to send a shout out to my son real quick let me go to screen that real quick all right yeah this is shirt this is shirt my son got me for father's day and shit black dad you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna thank him for the shirt you know what i mean Dope shirt. Um, I'm putting it, I'm putting my cash app in there again, extra for my son graduating on his 19th birthday on July 27th. I'm sending him to Miami, Florida. So whoever wanna hit that cash app and donate, do that shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't ask you broke niggas for nothing. <laughs> so today's the day, man. Y'all niggas stand up and show the guy I love. Now let's get back to our regular schedule program. That wasn't too harsh, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, the fat cat Nick, who's the supreme Kenneth McGriff, the 50 cents, the King Tut, all of those stories have been told. So, we're trying to tell stories that have not been told. And the guy that we're going to be talking about today is going to be a guy by the name of Samuel Baby Sam Edmondson. Now, this shit run thick and deep, mm-hmm. pretty much going to go from around. 1986 to around fair use, fair 19, use. 87, 88. Really, the shit really gonna hit the fan in 1988. Oh, so shit. it the it's it's really detailed as far as what happened um starting in 1986. But I think we all know crack was king. Um based on my research from 1985 to 1990, that shit was like really policed and in some communities, um, police would just be seeing young black niggas with beepers and a bunch of money. They didn't even know what was going on. Them niggas was probably stopping niggas that had crack on them and didn't even know what the fuck crack was. So, yeah, that shit was real, real loose, like in 86 and 87. And that's why I want to say you see a lot of murders at that time because it was like a free reign. The cops didn't know what we was doing. So if a nigga try it's like a gold mine. You literally sitting on a gold mine. And if a nigga try to take that, you could imagine the consequences. So I said it really hit the fan in nineteen eighty eight and that and pretty much that's where we're gonna start, man, because that's where everything kind of goes down. So right around August of nineteen eighty eight, one thing that really put a stain on this organization was the murder of a housing officer by the name of Anthony McLean. Now, Anthony McLean was a three-year veteran of the Housing Authority Police Force, and he was policing um, Tilden, the Tilden apartment houses. So everybody from Brooklyn, they know Samuel J. Tilden houses. Um, It's going to be an apartment complex. I'm not sure of how many buildings. yeah, in Brooklyn, you stay in your own fucking zone, man. Flatbush Coney Island, my nigga. <laughs> but, yeah, so he was patrolling the notorious Samuel J. Tilden houses, and they were actually looking or searching for a girl that was missing. I want to say she came missing the day before. Um, and I guess a little bit on that story, I'm sure it was a girl playing her family. Um, didn't know where she was. She ended up popping up at an acquaintance house, but not until Sergeant McLean was patrolling the the stairs in the building of Tilden. It was him and another officer. So, like I said, I've never been to Tilden, but if it's anything like the projects I've been to in New, in New York, or specifically the ones in Coney Island, 2947 West 23rd Street, all my niggas in building two, y'all know what it is. So, it's two staircases, two main staircases. Actually, and where we lived at, it was three. So, it was two main staircases, and it was the iron staircase. You did not go down that iron staircase unless you wanted to go to the dark side, nigga. <laughs> Dangerous shit happened on the iron staircase. So, 
according to the reports, the two officers were patrolling the two stairwells, but they were starting up, going down. The other sergeant that McLean was working with cleared his staircase, and Sergeant McLean came to the second floor, and he ended up stumbling on a drug dispute. Now, upon stumbling on that drug dispute, he was fired on, and the building that he was in is going to be 340 Dumont Avenue. Um, shout out to my East New York niggas. Shout out to my niggas. One, my PS 149 niggas. My, uh, and just shout out to all my niggas. Dumont between Mellon Brack, Miller Park, all that shit. But um, so, yeah, he was stumbling down. He came into a drug deal, and he ended up being shot on the top of his bulletproof vest in the neck. He would die from that shooting. Less than a month later, the authorities would arrest a guy by the name of Johnny Ray Robinson, who was 28 years old, in Philadelphia, um, a little bit over a month. They tracked his trail from, like, Washington, Maryland. He was traveling by air, train, and plane, pretty much trying to avoid detection. Not, sh not, not sure how he was detected or they knew exactly how it was him, but they knew it was him two days after. Now, this was going to be the shot that killed the game um, because a little bit, a month before this, we, we mentioned Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols. His organization shot a cop by the name of Edward Burns. That brought a big stain. Mm. George Bush campaigned with Edward Burns' badge to win election when he became president. And this is the first George Bush. So the, the murder of McLean happened just a month after that. So you know that was going to bring the heat on the organization. So it wasn't long before that where the organization was indicted in sometime in March of 1989. No, excuse me, excuse me. Sometime in July of 1990. Um, is actually, he was indicted a few months before that, but in July of 1990 was when the hammer slammed down on the organization. They were charged with... Six murders um, and just moving an enormous amount of crack. Almost unprecedented. So... The organization was only in operation for about 630 days, according to the investigation. And based on the authorities' research, they determined that they were making around $10,000 a day. So for those 630 days, they made $10,000 a day. So everybody, all my mathematicians, I know some of y'all like, well, how much? So they're going to say they made $6.3 million. Now, the government or this, the judge is actually going to be a guy by the name of Justice Aelo or Judge Aelo, pretty much through the book at Baby Sam. Um, he, he put him under, under the jail. He said things like, I want every asset that he has forfeited. Um, he said the amount of fines that he's going to assert on Mr. Edmondson is probably unheard of before in the New York State criminal case. Because right around that time, it was a law that was passed where they were using, where they can say, you made this amount of money, and we're going to fine you this amount of money. And it, the, the name of the law was the Organized Crime Control Act, and it was passed. It was like a federal racketeering law. So based on that, he sentenced him to two... He sentenced him to two consecutive 25-year-to-life prison sentences on the murder, plus 12 and a half to 25 on the attempted murders and operating a drug enterprise. But he also ended up fining him three times the amount that he made. He fined him $18.9 million as far as yeah. his restitution payment or what he would have to pay back. Shit is like unheard of. I heard one case very recently that we're going to be covering on Mob Ties, so y'all stay tuned for that. Um, where it was higher, but that was about 30 years from this incident, being that this one happened in 1990. So 
he was right up there when you mentioned Rich Porter, Alpo, uh, like I said, Fat Cat, Nichols, Supreme, um, pretty much all of the drug dealers, Convertible Burt that we mentioned that we have in the Trapper Hall of Fame. You can put Sam, you baby Sam, right into it. Uh, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. It's going to be P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. We're going to be back with more of this real trill spill shit. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties. Yo. That shit is crazy, bro. You heard that shit? But guess what? Found out it was a dirty New York cop that be on Vlad all the time. Let's let's share this with let me share this with y'all. This is some um, horrific shit right here, yo. If I say so myself, some horrific shit. A lot of niggas came home because of that nigga, though. I tell you that. And a lot of niggas got paid. Now check this out. A Brooklyn man says his testimony that helped locked up in Troy's 1980s crack deal, Sam Baby Sam Edmondson, was fabricated by the renegade cops whose questionable tactics have led to more than a dozen murder convictions being overturned in the last decade. Maybe Sam might get some bread. Keith Christmas, 63, took the stand against Samuel Baby Sam Emerson, Emerson's during the drug kingpin's 1990 drug trafficking and murder trial and linked Baby Sam to the murder of Kenneth Frankie in 1987 and Willie May in 1988. But during the testimony Wednesday, Christmas claimed that he was not present for either homicide. Instead, Christmas said this great detective, Louis Scarcella, and his partner, William Morris, cooked up a tale of his presence at the crime scene in order to secure secure conviction against Edmondson. It was just a fictitious story, Christmas said Wednesday. I don't like this guy, Edmondson, he said. You think I would sit here and make any of this up after 30 years? It was all about making sure that he got everything he deserved from their perspective and minds. Emerson was convicted in 1990 along with three top members of his drug who are running one of the most dangerous gangs in the city, which netted more than 20 million in drug proceeds in 1986 and 1987 alone. Breaking a part of the drug organization was shot to death on South Oxford Street near Atlantic Ave on June 30, 1987 and Clinton held by another member of the gang while Willie May was murdered on January 8, 1988 on Montuck, on Montuck Street in East New York. Both killing prosecutors say were ordered by Edmondson. This was claims that he only knew the baby face came from East New York for about 30 days in 1989 when he believes Edmondson ordered a hit on him to be carried out by Christmas' own childhood friend, John Amante. While Christmas was in the hospital, he testified Wednesday. Scorsella and Morris began visiting him and trying to get him to cooperate in the case against Edmondson, saying they were going to bust Christmas for a separate murder if he didn't flip. That started the strange relationship between Christmas and the cops, who he says ferried him from, from jail to restaurant mills to crime scenes where they would go over his story and even to the home of the two women who Christmas had sex with while the cops waited in the other room, he said. The prosecutor with the Brooklyn's DA office pushed back on Christmas' um, truthful trustworthiness. You knew what was expected of you. You knew, was, you, knew what, what, you knew what was expected of you, at least by the DA's office, to tell the truth, asked Assistant District Attorney Robert Schwartz on cross-examination. On paper, sir, yes, Christmas a minute. Everything you told that grand jury is a lie. So it says, correct, Christmas said. The whole environment was tainted, sir. It didn't matter what I said as long as I stuck to the script they gave me. During his brief and relatively uneventful testimony Wednesday, 
Scorsella said that he knew Christmas and remembered him from the Baby Sam investigation, but denied taking Christmas anywhere other than a crime scene. Despite claims of police misconduct and fabricated testimony, the prosecution maintained that Evans is guilty. They argued that they presented more than 60 witnesses at the trial, including numerous members of Evans' crew who testified against them. Keith Christmas allegedly recassination is incredible, the prosecutor wrote in a court paper. Know the Christmas testimony dovetail other witnesses at the trial. Moreover, the circumstances of Christmas alleged recantation were suspicious, prosecutors said. It came 25 years after the trial, only after the defendant's private investigator prompted him. Boy, these motherfuckers, they are horrible, bruh. So what they saying now, right? What they saying is um, it's looking like he's gonna get that overturned. That's why I read the newspaper article. Of course, you're gonna get it overturned. Anybody yeah, that, that cop that that even gave a nigga a ticket could get overturned right now. He that that cop is so disgraced right now. He, listen, if he was in on any nigga case right now, you could come home. Yeah, facts. Stand up, Eastwick in a build. I see you. Ray so my Lord, nigga, I tell you, baby Sam, my nigga. It, niggas took nigga when I first went to East New York, right? And I used to be getting out, you know, going out in the hood and shit. You know what I mean? I used to be in the veil and shit. Cause I, you know, being my pops used to live in Browns. We used to live in Langston Hughes projects. You know what I mean? Niggas was telling stories about baby Sam back then, my nigga. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of niggas, like you said, that niggas don't know about that was bigger than other niggas or had like real power in the streets. You know what I mean? Like yeah. nigga, like like Glaze was. Baby, like I said, yeah, Glaze was nothing compared to Baby Sam. Yo, I heard, that, I heard that. Man, the Ville is nothing but projects, bro. The that's Brownsville is nothing but projects. I'm talking about buildings that's got like 16 floors, and it's like eight of them to 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 one project. You got Langston Hughes, you got Tilden, you got Bree, yo, you got so many projects. Kingsboro, you got fucking uh man um. I could go on picking projects, uh, <laughs> bro. Projects for days. Linden projects. Yeah, that's crazy. And um, and this guy, he's on Vlad TV. Um, let me find his officer name again, so I could so I could um pull up his pull up some of the shit on Probably Vlad. Some shit like that. Yeah, let me find the officer name real quick, yo. Yo, it's mob niggas. Niggas from the mob. Yo, the mob used to be in Brooklyn, bro, in East New York. Yeah. Niggas, feds still go. Yo, the feds was, when I was in the hood out there hustling, feds was still going in East New York digging up bodies. Because back in the day, my nigga, East New York was nothing but lots. They even did a movie, what Charles Bronson movie. I think it's Charles, I'm thinking it's Death Wish Part 3. Death Wish Part 3 was shot in East New York, Brooklyn. Bro, Baby Sam was getting money. He controlled buildings and blocks, bro. Like one building, one project building was probably bringing ten thousand dollars, and he had the whole projects. Oh, oh, what's that? Yeah, I found, I found. Hold on. Marcus Garvey houses. Hold up one second, y'all. This is fair use right here. This little scroller. This 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 one. Oh, this is slime ball right here, yo. Another vacated conviction from Detective Louis Scroller. Yeah, this is fair use. I want y'all listen to this. And we're back with another edition of the New York Weekly Roundup for the week ending January 15th, 2021. My name is Patrick Michael McGarrow coming to you before a live studio audience. Please cue applause. Thank you. Thank fair you very use, much. Be sure to tip your waiter. Okay, so we actually have a relatively short week this week, but a couple of really good cases, and they're spread out a little bit. 
Uh, nothing, unfortunately, out of the Court of Appeals, but we do have one interesting one out of the First Department. And for all you people out there that have been dealing with severance and joinder issues, this buds for you. Uh, this is People versus James Santiago, docket number 2015-10259. This is a conviction after a joint trial of leaving the scene of an accident without reporting and driving while ability impaired. This case is reversed, and it's uh, remanded for separate trials on either uh, each of the two charges. So here, the leaving the scene without uh, leaving the scene of an accident without reporting was based on a uh, September fourth, twenty eleven, case registered to was arrested for driving while intoxicated. Uh, the motion was denied here. So the first department reversed, finding that none of the proof necessary to prove each offense was material to the other. The witnesses, locations, the first incident, and they kept referring to that first incident, incident in the car and the car's license plate. Um, then several months later, the defendant was arrested for driving while intoxicated or ability impaired. Um, and that incident happened several months after the first incident. Of course, the two were completely unrelated. At trial, the police officer who arrested the defendant on the second case was permitted to testify over objection that uh, the defendant resembled the driver of the car and was the registered owner of the car from the first incident, and they kept referring to that first incident. Um, now, prior to trial, the defendant had moved to sever the charges for separate trials, arguing the two were not related. Their proof of uh, one charge was not relevant to proof of the other. Uh, the motion was denied here. So the first department reversed finding that none of the proof necessary to prove each offense was material to the other. The witnesses, locations, and dates of the two crimes are completely unrelated. The people did not need the arresting officer in the DWI charge to identify the defendant because there was video and stills, uh, still photographs from that video, and the jury could have made that determination on their own. Uh, now, while certain evidence may be relevant and admissible to prove the defendant's identity in a joint trial, that was not the case here because, again, the jury could have just figured that part out for themselves. And there were no claims made by the people significantly. There were no claims made by the people that in the time between the first incident and the second incident, the defendant had changed. So uh, this is sent back for two separate trials. If you ever come into a uh, with severance, this is a case to look at because this will give you some guidance principles. Uh, and everything the lawyer did here was actually uh, the right thing to do. Um, so uh, that will take us over across the bridge to the second department. Second department just keeps having case after case after case. They've become the premier appellate division in the entire state of New York, which is nice to see. We now have People versus Elicio de Leon, docket number 2019-14650. This is actually an affirmance, but a happy affirmance, because this is the people's appeal of an order that granted a defendant's motion to set aside a verdict under uh, CPL uh, 440.10. So this is a 440 motion for post-conviction relief that was granted vacating a 1996 conviction for murder in the second degree. Now, why does this happen? Well, Detective Louis Scarcella strikes again here. Um, for all of you downstaters, you should probably be familiar with the name Detective Louis Scarcella from the NYPD, a former detective that worked out of Brooklyn. Uh, his name is attached to a number of wrongfully convicted uh, cases, costing the city many millions of dollars based on fabricated evidence, fabricated confessions, fabricated witnesses, uh, just the whole gambit here. Mm -hmm. um, so here the defendant uh, found out about Louis Scarcella's uh, many acts of dishonesty and uh, fabrication of evidence, along with another detective, Stephen Chimmel. Uh, both of them played a significant role in the defendant's arrest and the police investigation in this case, and both of them have been found to have engaged in corrupt police practices and misconduct during the same time period as this defendant's case. Uh, so because there had been vacators or convictions in the other case, uh, that was the defendant claimed newly discovered evidence. The Brooklyn Supreme Court credited that as newly discovered evidence. And contrary to the people's contention, the record supports the trial court's finding that both Scarcell and Schimmel's uh, involvement in this case, uh, newly discovered evidence of their misconduct, would have given the jury a different narrative and a different set of facts on which to base very critical 
credibility determination. Uh, so there is a very significant chance that had that evidence been received at the original trial back in 1996, it would have changed the outcome of the case. Because of that, this is newly discovered evidence. And this is going back for a new trial. That's a happy affirmance. The people may be taking this up to the Court of Appeals. If they do, I will let you know. Um, so, but excellent job to his attorney there fighting back this challenge. Next, we have People versus Gary Peterson. Doc Aye. Make Thank sure you. every stop on your road trip is one you want to make. Come in for an oil change and tire rotation hard, starting yeah. at twenty nine ninety nine, and get road trip ready at Midas. That's ridiculous. That is totally ridiculous. With an attorney by his side Thank at you. 68 years old, Detective Louis Scarcella repeatedly said in Brooklyn Supreme Court he couldn't remember every detail from an investigation two decades ago. Do you remember the Trevor Vieira homicide? No, I don't remember. Nelson Cruz has so far served 21 years in jail for the homicide. His lawyers allege the real killer told Scarcella Cruz did it. And they claim Scarcella used a witness, Andre Bellinger, who didn't even see the crime. Did you ever tell Andre Bellinger that Nelson Cruz committed this crime? Never. In court, Derek Hamilton, one of eight people whose murder convictions have been overturned. A judge determined he was coerced by Scarcella into confession. All of us stand here, a uh, victim of Scarcella. We know he's lying. Nelson Cruz should be released. Cruz's wife, Erica, says today is his birthday. He just turned 38. Wow. Yeah. So he spent... 20 birthdays, 20 birthdays. That's, that's all you could think about. Coming up in today's hearing, the 2007 appearance of Scarcella on the Dr. Phil show, discussing the psychology of false confessions. Are there rules when it comes to homicides? No, no, there are none. I will do whatever I have to do within the law to get a confession. I stated there were no rules, but I operated under the law. Today, he said he caught suspects in around 160 murders in his career. Do you stand by all the investigations you've conducted? 110 percent. This hearing will determine if Nelson Cruz can be released. Scarcella is one of about a dozen witnesses testifying. Yo, yo, bruh, bruh, you hear this nigga, right? Trust me, bruh, trust me. Bruh, they got to they got to overturn these, all, for real, any case that he... That he was on, they should vacate, bro. Listen, that's what's going to have to happen. You have to, but the only thing is, see, a lot of it too, right? Is going to be if dudes are smart and go get lawyers. You know what I mean? So it's just got to be one of those things where you know, do if people are talking and you know, again, you know, niggas is letting niggas know, like, yo, boy, this nigga locked you up. Yo, tell, go get you a lawyer. And again, there's a lot of lawyers, like I said, that probably take that case just because of the cop who did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's crazy though, man. This man, this guy, he just he was just convicting. Just convicting people, bro. With lies, fabrications, you know what I'm saying? Yo, bro, it's a lot of cops back in those. Remember, I was just telling you about the 75th precinct, bro. And I told you how that your brother told you it's a movie on that precinct. This was the dirtiest precinct in the country, bro. Listen, a lot of cops was doing that shit, bro. You know what I mean? Just that some of them ain't even get caught yet, my G. Facts. Back in the day, you said back in the days, it was no rules. Um, Hold on one second. God, we got another Brooklyn legend talking about it. Let's say we had to say this fair use, guys, fair use. I watch this channel often. He's gonna do. Ooh, today's a good day. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my nigga Zeke. I fucks with him, man. He seemed to sensationalize a lot of individuals that was famous in, in our world, in some of our worlds, in the streets. That told that made him cooperate. Well, today's the day where a man who, who had two life sentences, or got two life sentences, actually may be seeing some freedom real soon. For those that's from Brownsville, New York. The man's name is Baby Sam. Some may know him for being being hanging about Robert Bird, but today his murder conviction was tossed out of court. The murder conviction. 
That's one step closer to freedom. The man been in jail over 25 years. Baby Sam from Brownsville, his, his murder charge has been tossed. Um, in November, it goes Brooklyn always goes hard, but well, Mr. Former Crack King from Baby Sam Edmondson. Edmondson could be going home soon because of a dirty cop. One time Brooklyn drug Don Samuel Babyface Edmondson is itching close to every day to get in his life. His two life sentences, two life sentences overturned for narcotics, two life sentences for narcotics trafficking and murder overturned the final freedom after more than three decades behind bars in New York State prison. Edmondson, Edmondson, 60, ran the Brownsville crack game in the late 80s. He was convicted at a 1990 trial in state court for ordering the King gangland slayings of Kenny Rankin, his partner in the drug business, and Willie May, a front line worker for his organization, suspected of skimming the tail. But according to sworn testimony by Keith Big K Christmas, a former enforcer for Baby Sam, Edmondson and the star witness against him at his trial 31 years ago, the original testimony he provided trying him, tying him to the Rankin and May homicides was bogus and coerced by disgraced NYPD detective Lou Scarcella. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people. Fair use, fair use, fair Mr. use. Scarcella in that last Brooklyn District Attorney. Before you know, Mr. Hines, Mr. Hines was Mr. Sella arrest. Man sat in jail for over thirty years, thirty like over twenty five years. Brownsville gained notoriety during the 1940s as the base of operation for an organized crime syndicate known as Murder Incorporated, also known as Murder Inc. It was a brother who moved to Brownsville in the early 70s who read information on this crime syndicate. Which brings me to our story. story, story, story. Urban fair American use, Publishing use. Group and Stay Enterprises presents Portrait of an Urban American Gangster. The Baby Sam story. Fair you, fair you. I'm trying to show the evolution of the urban American gangsters and how they derived from the set in the 80s. That was a smart ass motherfucker. Very smart. The motherfucker got brains. He, he, he always was smooth, but he was always smart. Very intelligent. You crack game. Game into I think it was my street savvy and, 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 and my higher learning education. I think it's the combination of both combined that helped me do what I've done. And to go from zero to ten in the amount of time that I did it, Much heart that the boys have. This nigga has that, it was down, and stop, East New York. 25 grand a day, business, my brother. And that's just from one yeah. spot. 25,000. He came home with his own gold. He went out, he set it off. You gotta turn 15 cents to a dollar, like, like no other motherfucker could. I just made myself a little purchase. Before you know it, <laughs> I was investing, uh, I was investing me. He 
went for it as high as, 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 as the limit to millions of dollars. Uh, that moment he had a driver on, he said, come up with a big joke. Remember, he had the world is mine. Had the big piece on his neck, the world is mine, with the big Mercedes bag. He always stayed fly. Yeah. I mean, Bill Blast, Carolyn's line. That niggas playing in the industry already right now, back then. Whoa. He said a lot of trends, a lot of styles that rappers are following now. The Spanish kid that kept the cigar in his mouth, Tito, Ever Sand the Jewel. Who also did Puffy Jewel, Biggie Small, Little Kim, Craig Mack, and others as well. With that being said, I gotta say, where we come from, you can't say you did something, you didn't live it. Not all money is good. That money, that's some bad money, man. New Jack City shit came from Sam. A lot of people don't know. Mario Van Peeple sat in that baby Sam's trap. I never told you that. You said that. I don't, I don't know. But this is what I do. I know that Mario Van Peeple played one of the police detectives in the movie that I was in. They called him Baby Sam, but he was a fucking gangster too. This is something that comes with the territory of associating yourself with gangsters. Uh, Sam gave jobs to a lot of people. Schoolboys in Jersey, they rules that I had opened up that territory. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the music industry so I stopped doing my own little label called S&P Post Production. I met at Russell Simmons. I was introduced to through uh, DJ Scrap. Shit happened. People said things about him. Of course, I'm gonna be where he at. Johnny Ray, just one of Baby Sam's henchmen and co-defendant, was convicted of killing a cop in the stairwell of a Brooklyn project called Brownsville. He wasn't no born killer. He's not a killer today. He's not a killer today. I don't want to remember you know, the Sometimes people make long time. I've been locked up about 20, about 20, 20, 24 years. As long as you ain't dead, it ain't over. And if I can free him today, I will free him today. I don't think he deserves. All right, let me ask you a question, bro. God. How the hell could a judge make a fine 19 million when they say you only made 3 million? Listen. You already know how it go, bro. Listen, like you said, man, they believe that goddamn cop. And that a cop is no liar. So are they gonna get that man back his his that time and give him back that money that they from the time he lost in prison? Listen, they gonna they're gonna have to. All right, all right, child. Yo, free baby Sam Samuel Baby Sam Emerson. Let's free him, man. The next story we got right now is Charles your White. On video, calling the police of King Yella, the rapper from and King Yella from Chicago, right? <laughs> he said he said he got video of Charleston White calling the police. <laughs> you, uh, you whack you whack one hundred now, nigga. You got the tape, nigga. I got the tape, nigga. I got the tape. <laughs> Hold up. Design easily. Fair use, Print fair use. beautiful. So, what kind of online crime? Like, is it? Oh, using your car? Uh, no, man, I'm a terroristic threat by uh, a popular, well-known, influential uh, gang member. And, and I believe he's on federal probation or, or, or parole out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Y'all tap in with Cub. The CEO approved this. Fair you. Yes. And today, we got that Shirek Savage, King Yellow, and Charleston White back at it again. Charleston White then made that phone call to Las Vegas Police Department and made a report on King Yellow. So before I play that clip, smash that like button, slide over and hit that subscribe button. And since you are in the area, don't turn on all post notifications. So you know every time I drop some hot new content. Well, King Yellow and Charleston White had some beef in the past, and Charleston White actually apologized and made things better. But for some reason, King Yellow went on a Say Cheese interview and said when he see Charleston White, he gonna slap him. And you already know how Charleston White is. If you send me any threats his way, 
he picking up the phone and he calling 911. That boy Charleston White said he's scared. He don't know what he gonna do. He don't want King Yell to slap him. So he didn't call Las Vegas Police Department and file charges on King Yeller on live. So check out this video and let me know. Was Charleston right, right for making that call or was he wrong? Or was King Yeller right or was he wrong? And if you're part of the hunting gang, drop them hunters. I'm out. Emergency Man. question about a fire or medical issue, press 3. Man, King For information about it. administrative services, this is filing, canceling. Yeah, we hadn't committed crimes together. This is reporting a crime. I'm a law of all options before reporting report a crime. And so I threaten me. So just in case <laughs> we see each other. Yo, Big E, yo, Big E, hit that link, Big E, hit that link. I love to hear what you got to say about this cat. So let me make a report. Hopefully they violate his probation, so I ain't got to bang, 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 because he gonna try to slap me. I'm on bang, bang, bang it. So, so he can still see his little ugly ass daughter. They gonna put him in jail. I think they say I got to go online. Las Vegas Police Department headquarters is located at 400 South Martin Luther King Boulevard. Their hours are Monday through they got Friday. They got the police department on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. They got the police They're department on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Las Vegas Police Department headquarters is located at 400 South Martin Luther King Boulevard. Their hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're open on all holidays except for Christmas Day. They can what? be reached at 702 828-3475. Please listen for additional information on our area command. For area command located Las Vegas Police Department headquarters is located at 400 South Martin Luther King facts, Boulevard. Well, facts. Their hours are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're open on all holidays except for Christmas Day. It can be reached at 702-828-3475. Please listen for additional information on our area command. For area command located closest to the Las Vegas Strip, press 1. For area command this located is too much. of the I'm going to get you. Well, I got patience. You just got to have patience. You got to, <laughs> since I don't live in Las Vegas, I don't know what number to directly call, so I got to fish around to try to find. I'm going to get your ass, boy. See, I don't know what's part of love. I got no, that nigga said he don't know the official. So we got the other nigga. I'm gonna nigga, this nigga going on Vlad TV. Gangster shit. And then, and then I want to say Vlad and these platforms is the police. Now, y'all done got on here and said some oh, police God, shit. Threat, what you going to do to him? I'm a threat. What I'm going to do to him? You cannot do that in the United States of America. Yeah, what you said, bro? God, don't ever threaten him, God. God, don't threaten him, man. <laughs> God. <laughs> Don't threaten him, please, God. I'm not gonna threaten that little punk bitch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna no make a promise to him. No, don't make no promises. Leave him alone, bro. Now nah, hold up. We, we, let's finish this coward, man. Coward ass shit, boy. Coward shit, man. That you just recorded the crime. This is what that's called self snitching. You just self snitched on yourself. Now I got to be the snitch. No, you snitched on yourself by saying what you're going to do. So now I'm just going to report the crime that you snitched about. I'm not snitching. I'm just reporting the crime that you done already snitched about. So let me do my due diligence. <laughs> ah, man, man, boo, boo. You niggas scared of the police. Ah, man, man, boo, boo. You niggas cry when the police get involved. Oh, he did something to the police. Well, don't be bad then, nigga. Don't be bad. You won't have to be scared of the police because I ain't scared of the police. We finna get his ass, y'all. Crime. Not your record. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm trying to locate. I'm trying to report a crime. Uh, an online crime. Okay, so what kind of online crime? Like, is it uh, are you using your card? Oh uh, no, ma'am. A terroristic threat by a uh, a popular, well-known, influential uh gang member, and and I believe he's on federal probation or uh, uh, or parole out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, are you local? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm actually, I'm actually a, 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 a upcoming entertainer, a comedian. I do quite, quite a bit of shows in Las Vegas. 
Uh, and this this gang member, I believe he's a gang member based out of Chicago, the GDs, the BDs, uh, one of the most notorious gangs uh, in, in America. They are now moving into the Las Vegas area and they are making threats online uh, that certain entertainers are going to have to pay, uh, that we're going to have to pay a shakedown fee. Well, this guy here um, did a video on on before millions of people and told the people that when I come to Chicago that he's going to hurt and harm me. Uh, and this is a video recording that he did and he put out into the public. And I know with, with, with Las Vegas, Nevada being a big tourist, with tourism no. being one of their main economic uh, resources of, 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 of finances, I'm sure that they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't approve of a uh, of a, a felonious gang member making public statements and making public videos, uh, sending it out throughout the country saying Yo, that they're going to harm uh, uh, entertainers and community activists when they enter into the Las Vegas area. Bruh. Yo, what's wrong with your man, boy? It's your man, boy. It's your man, son. What's wrong with your boy? Yo, yo, listen, 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 listen. Yo, leave that man alone. He won. He won. He won. That nigga ain't win nothing. I'm on his ass. No, no, you're not. You, oh, you're going to have police on your ass. Leave him the hell alone. I ain't scared of no police, nigga. I ain't saying you got to be scared of police. It ain't about being scared. But it's just that, again, again, you see what he doing. You don't need that kind of drama. You don't need that shit right now. You know what I mean? You're on a different path, God. This is what I'm trying to tell you. He he baiting niggas in right now. But he baiting niggas, but, but he's instigating to start with niggas talking about niggas, bro. That, so what? Me, listen, yo, listen, let me tell you something, bro. If if you go call the law on people, you shouldn't be running your mouth talking about people saying what you're gonna do to people, disrespecting people way of life and beliefs, bro. That shit, man. A real nigga, a real nigga ain't gonna say what he's gonna do when you see him. A real nigga's gonna do it. Listen, he a nigga five feet tall. That nigga about a hundred. I donkey, yo, I donkey Kong that nigga right on the top of his head. Bang, <laughs> bro. That's we talk. He about I donkey Kong that nigga, make him bite his tongue. His mouth oh. is about oh. sixty pounds, my nigga. Out that hundred and twenty, his mouth is sixty. Yeah, that's what my, that's what my donkey Kong around his, around his forehead while he talking. My donkey Kong on his forehead, he gonna bite his tongue off and crack his teeth. But other than he that, running his mouth. Look at this nigga. Look at that. Look at that nigga, boy. He just knowing, look, looking like a goddamn snitch. They look like a rat, master split looking nigga. <laughs> look like master split. Hold up, yo. Charles, so why we're your ass today, boy? Okay, so I'm gonna give you the phone number to Crime Stoppers. Yes, ma'am. Hold on, let me get. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yo, you hear this nigga, boy? This nigga said Crime Stoppers. This nigga. That nigga is a savage, boy. Talking about niggas in Chicago. That nigga is savage. Your man is going to love this trimmer. Yo, hold up. We're going, we're going back to Charles the White Punk, guys. You're welcome. Uh, and you've been great help. You have a blessed day. All right. Uh-oh. This nigga, hold up, bruh. This nigga, he's stupid as hell. Man, he gonna get himself killed, bruh. Especially talk about people's daughters. Look what he said about King Yellow's daughter. King Yellow responds. King Yellow responds, bro. <laughs> Welcome back, fam. Fair you. It's your boy, Buddha. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you do. Warn y'all. And you see it play out like this. King Yellow needs to leave that nigga alone. King Yellow. I said that's a dope thing, baby. His mama was a crackhead, baby. He beat me. He a young boy, yellow, or that boy that you asked, baby. You said, why he rocking like that? He looked retarded. She was talking, my wife was talking about King Yellow. She said, why he rocking like that in that cone with all that scribbly stuff on his face? I said, that's a dope thing, baby. His mama was a crackhead. That was, he look like he's an institution. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. King Yellow, baby. He's an old yellow nigga with a bunch of scripts scratching on his face. And he got an ugly daughter. Yeah, yeah, he got an ugly yellow daughter. 
Yo, yell ass nigga in the corner rocking like a motherfucker with scrap this scrap it. I bet I bet the PTA people don't take him serious at the schoolhouse. I bet when you go up to the schoolhouse, I talk to them teachers about somebody in school, they don't take him serious looking at his daughter, then looking at for him with them scrap this scrap this shit on his face. Not if he start rocking. Not if he start rocking. <laughs> 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 say baby, listen. Say listen. Say, baby, them say, and, then, and guess what that nigga, the Baltimore nigga say, yeah, just like he told me, I took the $3,000. You goddamn right, I took that. Oh. Hello, world. It's me, Big Rat. I'm back again. I want y'all to tell me if I'm wrong, or am I going to be wrong? about this old man, man. So, he sent me a video, Charles White. You know, he said, uh, I'm always rocking in the chair, you know, retarded boy, and all this and that. Now, it's cool to make videos about me. But with your bitch ass, whatever, man. Children, my daughter, oh, GLD, you's a bitch. You do all that, all that shit you talk about, like it's for the youth. But you talking about a three year old child, though. You goofy, marked ass clown. You and your ugly ass dog, rat looking ass wife, bitch ass nigga. So since you want to do all that on GLD, I'm not 600 degrees, you police ass nigga. I heard you're going to be in Vegas soon. Come on. <laughs> I hope you come with the police. Because if I find out where you're going to be at, my mama and my kids, I'm going to... You see these? You see this? I'm going to put this motherfucker all on your face. I'm going to smack you like a bitch. I'm going to smack you so fucking hard for playing with my daughter, you bitch-ass, mark-ass, old-ass, boss by head ass nigga. On gang. Like, why is you playing with my children, though? Like, nigga, what the fuck you think this is? You think I'm a goofy for real? You police-ass, mark-ass, scary-ass, old-ass man? Nigga? A nigga was taking, wasn't taking you serious. That thing was a joke. And that nigga, I'm serious as a heart attack, you bitch-ass nigga. On my kids, nigga. So when I see you, if I ever see you on my mama, ain't gonna be no 600 breezes and conversation or nothing. I'm gonna smack the living life out your bitch-ass. Yeah, nigga. 911, Robert King yelling and rocking the guy in the rocking chair the, with the ugly part of me playing. That's what you're going to be doing, though. <laughs> my kids. And I hope whoever whoever win them or anything, y'all better help. I'm going to smack y'all ass, too. So y'all playing with a whole gunster, though. I don't know what y'all think this is. Y'all seen a nigga. This not, I don't vlog, man. I talk shit on GOP. I speak my opinion. This not vlog, man. I don't edit. I don't do none of that, bro. I ain't no extra shit on my shit, nigga. This one take Jake, nigga. Everything I'm saying, bro, I ain't gonna go back and put this da 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 da. I'm not doing none of that, goofy ass niggas. Yeah. Put your children on there. I ain't even gonna play with your kids, though. Because I don't even do that. I do this for the youth, bro. Nigga, what the fuck is your old goofy ass doing? You talking about a three year you like 50 so she old enough to be your grandmother, you goofy ass nigga. And you saying shit, you ugly as fuck. Tell your bitch ass, ugly ass bitch, your wife. Tell her dog looking ass to get on the camera. Black she Warrior Spirit, salute. Y'all hit that, y'all hit that um, catch app too. King of New Jersey. BTB TV. All right, look, that's enough. Yellow. <laughs> Gee, I warned y'all. Folks, hey, folks. Don't let them trick you out your position, folks. Hey. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, folks. The police is going to be at you before you get to him. You're not going to be able to get to him. Then you didn't already did a video. Stated you hope he bring the police. Now, this guy right here, bro. Listen, I'm leaving that nigga alone. I don't want no drama. He ain't playing fair. It's like it's like shooting me. I shoot you back, and then you go tell. 
Listen to this nigga, man. He All the niggas y'all love. Use. From Tookie Williams to Raymond Washington to Zero. Them niggas ain't never been down for going to war with that white boy, nigga. Dang, dang, nigga. All my crimes been predicated on white people, nigga. Robbing, raping, stealing, and killing white people. And y'all, and y'all, and y'all listen to this nigga. You Robbing, know. raping, stealing, and killing white folk, nigga, is what I did as a kid. I don't want to hear nothing about no crab ass, bitch ass rapping nigga named Zero. Who ain't never shot a gun at a white Good person? Keisha I don't want to hear Queen. shit about no bitch ass nigga named Pimp C that ain't never stood up, went to war with white people. Nigga ain't never stood over no white man. You niggas ain't never stood over no white man and watch him die, nigga. So don't come telling me about no bitch ass nigga like Tookie Williams, nigga. Crab ass niggas, slob ass niggas. Mob James them ain't never stood over no white boy, nigga. For the race. Slim Thug is a big pussy, nigga. When he when you go to talking about my kind of talk, you nigga name it ho. Sauce Walker a ho, nigga. Sauce Walker eat white bitches pussies, nigga, and make flicks with white bitches. He don't rape, kill, and steal and white folk, nigga. Real nigga kind of shit. Niggas like Eroy Brown in Texas, niggas. You niggas talking about some bitch. Yo. This guy, boy. Somebody need to put hands and feet on him, yo. For real. Yeah, the police. Man, fuck the police, man. Sometimes you got to do it for the police. Uh, mm-mm. Mm-mm. You got to take him out. If you're going to do it, you got to take him out, bro. Because he telling them. He going to the courtroom. He pointing you out. It was BTB. He got a YouTube channel. Let me show you something too, right? Let me show you something. Yeah. People still follow that nigga. You see, niggas still follow him. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you right there. I don't know why niggas give him a platform. Niggas interview this nigga. I don't know why, bro. I don't know why. Because they know that this nigga gonna talk some bullshit. Like he said, like whack one hundred. He's like the same, like same kind of nigga, bro. Yo, bro. And we got, and we got another story that we should tap, we should tap in on today too. Whack one hundred alleged, allegedly has video Benzinia playing with sex to a sex toy. God damn it, whack. Hold on, let's see, let's see. Y'all want to see that? What up, YouTube? Getty Radio back at you with another video. Fair man. Use. Look, check this out. Some whack it around what you know i Someone, know it i, I gotta that. tell you something bro for real well call me you know you was always my home bro so can you i just, was always can i just me, tell you hey. what it is but i ain't gonna tell you who yet well what it is who you pregnant no no somebody um somebody called me facetime butt naked putting a, a toy in their butt i know the nigga yep is this who I think it is? I don't know. The crazy <laughs> nigga? But the crazy just, nigga gonna oh, come shit. on top of the hill? I took screenshots. I ain't gonna put them out there, but I'll show you. Yo, is the nigga you. on top of the hill? My nigga. I'll show you. We all wanna know. I'll show you. I ain't, send, I ain't sending them to you, but I'll show you. No, I don't wanna see it. I don't well, wanna, you, you say it after it happens. You nick man. Just yeah, answer right. my question. Is it the nigga from on top of the hill? With the elevator? Man. Yeah! Oh, my God. Nigga has a vibrator in there. Like, like you yeah. hear what I just said? I said? What? I said the name. Wait, who you say? People, stop. <laughs> and then, Nick, she know who I'm talking about. People nigga on top stop. of the hill with the elevator. Oh my God! I got the pictures. What's oh. wrong with that nigga? I don't know. Hey, was he doing that back then? I don't know. Oh, man. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my right. God, buddy. Right. 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 Right.
Wait, Wait what? Oh, man. Pitbull, oh, you was man. on top of the old elevators? <laughs> hey, you was all at you was at the crib hey, over there. It's the same nigga we talk. Oh, you know, man, the pool on the fourth floor. Okay, Four. it's the same nigga. No, it's not. Oh, you talk? He might be talking about the nigga next door though. He, he on Clubhouse. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah, you got to call me. Somebody oh. already said it before a few months ago. I think. God damn, Candy. I don't know who it is. I don't know who. But one thing about this is she always has the goods on you, nigga. I used to be sitting back laughing because every time I was the only one that didn't try to fuck it, right? So all the other niggas are trying to fuck it. The word is on the block. She got the fire. So every time she sees me, I was the one she could tell everything to, right? I'm like looking at these niggas like, what? Who did what? 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 And I got that. Man, she like. One of the reasons why I got away from like 30% of these niggas. Wait, did you say word on the block that she got the fire? Hell oh yeah. Oh my God, I'm muting up. That's what it was. Don't act like you didn't know that. You had these niggas going crazy. Yeah, well, niggas is, po niggas is politicking. Niggas, niggas is like, I'm like, yo, bro, that ain't none of y'all baby mama, none of y'all wife. Like, my nigga, she ain't did nothing wrong. She ain't obligated to you niggas, nigga. Man, fuck that shit, nigga. I took her here, took her there, did this. Okay. And then on another day, he did that. That's on y'all. Terrible. Can y'all can can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. No, it's like so bad. Like, I don't, I'm not even trying to be funny. If I'm over talking, y'all, my bad. Because I really can't hear yeah. um, what's going on. But um, we need, um, well, we need a screenshot. That's what you can do for me. Send me a screenshot. Like whack. I you can do, sir. The least you can do. The least know, you, can do. you know, them Africans don't like us Americans. I, I, learned, that. I, learned, that. I, I learned that from Sir Major. No, no, no. 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 No, no, Let's, 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 be, let's, let's, let's be clear, y'all. We need you don't that like that. We need, we need that screen. No, don't turn it into a diaspora war. We we need that screenshot. Shout out to Sir Major. Thank you, Thank you, Yo, we need, yeah, he's trying to switch it. We need, y'all, put a one in the chat if we need that screenshot of that video. <laughs> we need that, we need that video. Let's be clear. TV is fake. Why do WAC 100 always have the LGBTQ community in his, in his chats? I don't know, bro. Listen. That's another that was a preview, y'all. That was a preview. We're about to go live on WAC 100 Punk Behind right now, and we're about to blow this shit up. You down with me, bro? Yo, listen, bro. This nigga, WAC 100, yo, bro. Yo, bro, hold up. We're about to end this and go live with the WAC 100 thing right now, bro. All right. All right. Yo, peace, yo. We'll be right back in five minutes. Five and five, bro. We'll be right back, y'all. It's going down. <laughs>